Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's 6.43, preparing for an evening launch. Growing up, I didn't really have access to the outside world. I was obsessed with exploration. As you can see by the windmill, the wind is very slight. Now this was before the internet, before expanded cable even. Ideal launch conditions. I had very little access to the ideas of other cultures and other religions. Ignition. I constantly wondered what life was really like on the other side of the world. Joseph Campbell believed that everything begins with a story. The driving idea of his life was to understand the power of the stories and legends of the human race. You may find that uh, with a proper introduction, this uh, subject will, will catch you. When I was 13, my dad bought some Joseph Campbell tapes and we wore those things out on long road trips. Campbell was my first real window to the world. He dazzled me not only with his knowledge, but also his love and appreciation for other cultures. All religions are true for that time, if you can find what the truth is. He enchanted me with the idea that other people in other places might have some wisdom that I could never learn by staying home. These myths tell me how others have made the passage and how I can make the passage. And, and also what the beauties are of the way. Once this catches you, there is always such a feeling from one or another of these traditions of information of a deep, rich, life vivifying sort. I don't believe in um, being interested in subjects because they're said to be important and interesting. I believe in being caught by it somehow or other. Looking out of that plane window at age 23 was one of the most exciting slash terrifying moments of my life. I'm naturally very shy, and the only way to secure the most basic necessities for my existence at that point would be by making friends with the people on the other side of that glass. So to help me make friends, I brought what I now consider my most important piece of fieldwork equipment, this little Aerobee Frisbee. Everywhere I went, I could just pull it out, start a game of catch or 500, and pretty soon we were friends. I met friends everywhere with this. And that's how I met Lazarus, who became my very best friend. We had the best summer together. We did everything together. He ended up taking me to his home village, and I completely fell in love with the place. This is a world I had always dreamed of, a world so different from all I knew. A world without electricity, running water, internet, or supermarkets. It provides everything they need. They grow all of their own food in the surrounding mountains and are completely self-sufficient. They carry the food and firewood in homemade string bags, and the bags are so strong they can carry a small human. They cook their food right in the coals of the fire while they sit around and tell stories. They greet each other with these awesome click handshakes. Hey, brother. <laughs> no. <laughs> their work, often intense and challenging, <laughs> still leaves plenty of time for fun, and people of all ages join in for sports and games throughout the afternoon and evening. They bathe in rivers and waterfalls. They live with some of the most amazing wildlife in the world, like tree kangaroos, and this cockatoo who could speak the language better than I could when I first arrived. And at night, out come the flying foxes. The sky dances with clouds.
I became part of the family. My brother Lazarus, my brother Penny, Penny's wife Melina, their son Lanson, Papa, Mama, Grandpa Maylock. They became my New Guinea family, and along with many friends, they became some of the most important people in my life. I came back to visit them every summer, and on the third trip, we decided to build a house so that Sarah could come live with me for a whole year. Now when I say we decided to build a house, I should say that it is a very big we. Like it took dozens and dozens of people to hand carve every single piece of wood that had to come directly from the forest around us. Sarah arrived the next year and we started building a life together. We started our own garden and just tried to learn everything we could about how to make a go of it in this place. We learned to share our breakfast with Koki. And we learned that it can rain really hard sometimes. Chicken coming time! <laughs> and that the rain will bring down the spider webs yeah. and the spiders. <laughs> which can actually make a tasty treat. <laughs> they celebrated our arrival with this amazing traditional dance. And they taught me how to dance, though I wasn't very good at it. One night, Melina went into labor. She ran out onto the airstrip, all the women following her, including Sarah, and she gave birth right into Sarah's hands. They named him David, after Sarah's father. Watching Penny and Lazarus become dads was one of the most inspiring things I've ever had the pleasure of watching, and it completely changed my life. And just as they shared their culture with us, we shared our culture with them. You must stop. Me pass him hello blow me go along him. Now make up a big plan to this. Look it. Yeah, Lenson, yeah. After spending most of my twenties with them, I realized that we had gone through one of life's greatest transitions together. We were just kids when we first met. Now they had kids of their own.
Throughout my 20s, Lazarus, Penny, and I had been almost inseparable. Oh, wee! Henry! Come to the tree, it's awesome! Now we saw our kids forging the same kind of bonds. I came here 20 years ago looking for some deep truths. I wanted to explore their mythology and religion, but the most important truths I found right on the surface, immediately evident to any six-year-old, though perhaps harder to see for the rest of us. People say that what we're all seeking is a meaning for life. I don't think that's what we're really seeking. I think what we're seeking is an experience of being alive. Making a little house kitchen for yourself? Good stuff, buddy. I love your little house. Hey, Zoltz! Oh, Zoltz, Zoltz! Him come up, place my penis now. Just like me, my kids decided to build a life here and lots of friends showed up to help. <laughs> what is this up here? Cookhouse. It's your cookhouse. Show me around. So what are the features? Mm-hmm. Here's our fire pit. We have fire in my house. <laughs> As we prepared Christmas dinner, I realized that we had shared over a thousand meals together and that this would be one of our biggest Christmases ever because the three of us had become 17. To say that our lives were intertwined seems not quite strong enough because the secret to the strength of the string bag is that although it appears like many strings woven together, it is in fact just one string woven in on itself over and over again. <laughs> when you reach a certain age and look back over your life, it seems to have had an order. It seems to have had a, a been composed by someone. And those events that when they occurred seemed merely accidental and occasional and just something that happened turn out to be the main elements in a in a consistent plot. Just as those people whom you met by chance became effective agents in the structuring of your life, so you have been an agent in the structuring of other lives. And the whole thing gears together like one big symphony. Everything influencing and structuring everything else. It's as though our lives were the dream of a single dreamer in which all the dream characters are dreaming too. It's a beautiful idea. Hi, Dad. Hey, buddy. It's nice to have a little extra time, right? Good houses. Mm-hmm. We make fires. Somehow the circle suggests immediately a completed totality, whether in time or in space. Nice. George, do you love New Guinea? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I think you'd like to stay longer. I wish. 
Yeah. I think it's it's important to live life with a knowledge of its mystery. Oh, look! Yeah, that's amazing. And of your own mystery. And it gives life a, a new zest, a new balance, a new harmony to do this. Why do you suppose the circle became so universally symbolic? Well, because it's experienced all the time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You go sit down. And you experience it in leaving home, going on your adventure, hunting or whatever it may be, and coming back to home. Thank you.